Hey guys, this is a lesson on algebraic expressions, just kind of refreshing your memory of what some of this means. If you've never watched my videos before, I highly recommend you pause and try the examples when prompted. Also, the free guided notes for this lesson I think are particularly useful, so you can find those at DividingConquerMath.com. Okay, so where we're going to start with this actually is some terminology, so I'm just going to kind of show you these and then I'm going to explain what they actually mean. So a constant is any real number not attached to a variable. So just hold on to this for a second. I'm going to show you three different terms. A variable is a letter that stands for a real number and you can substitute values in it. And then finally, a coefficient is a number being multiplied by a variable. So these are three terms that get used a lot. So it's just helpful to kind of know um, what, what these actually are. So let's say that I've got the expression 3x plus 7. Okay, so the part that's a coefficient, so this is a number being multiplied by a variable. So it would be this part right here. So when there's a number attached to a letter, that's a coefficient. Then the x is going to be the variable. So the variable is usually easy to find because it's a letter. And then this number that's by itself that is not attached to a letter, that's what's called a constant. Okay, so that's the first part of this. Couple other terms. Um, the next terminology is the word term. Um, so single. This is a single number variable or a combination of the two separated by a plus or minus sign. So going back to this example of three x plus seven. So this right here. This is a term, and then this is a term. So there's like a lot that actually goes into kind of these expressions, and then you can tell that it's a new term if it's separated by a plus or minus sign, like right here. Okay. Next we have a factor. This is a number or variable being multiplied with another number or variable. So I have two different examples here to just show you how, how this could turn out. So here with like 7x, this is a factor and this is a factor. So there are two factors here. And then here, so this is just a, a multiplication expression, but we can also say that these are each a factor. So factoring has to do with multiplication. Terms have to do with addition and subtraction. And then finally, we have an, what is an algebraic expression. So this is a mathematical string of constants and terms that can be added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided together. So an algebraic expression is literally just this. So this whole thing is the algebraic expression. So just knowing what these terms are, they get used a lot in math. So you just want to kind of be familiar with what, what someone is referring to. So what I want to do is I want to just do a quick example here where we can play around with the terminology. So we're going to identify the constants, variables, coefficients, terms, and factors. So I will do um, a couple of these with you. So starting with like 5x. So here's the expression 5x. So are there any constants? There are none, right? So a constant has to just be a freestanding number without a variable. Now, what are the variables in this? That would just be x. x is the variable, and then the coefficient is the number attached to the x, so that would be 5. Now, in this case, there's only one term. So 5x would be the lone term. And then in 5x, there are two factors. So 5 and x. So that's kind of like what we're going to be working with here. So let's do one more together just to make sure you've kind of got the idea. So I've got 2x plus y now. So are there any constants? No, there are no constants because there's no freestanding number. So we'll just put none again. And then what are the variables? So what, what letters do we see? So there are two variables in this one. There's the x and there's the y. Then what are the coefficients? So some of this can be a little bit open to interpretation. So one coefficient is the number two. We can see that. Y technically has like an invisible coefficient. What would that be? That would be the number one. I'm going to put the one in parentheses just to kind of indicate like it's, it's invisibly there. We know there's a coefficient there. Now, in this expression, there are two terms. So remember, it's separated by the plus sign right here. So the two terms in this case will be 2x and y. And then for the factors, so the factors will be, you have the factor 2 and x. That's one pair of factors. Those go together. And then if you wanted to, you could break this out as that invisible 1 and y. Those are technically factors. Although if you left this out, um, that that's fine too. I think sometimes... Um, like it's a little interpret open to interpretation when you can't see the, the coefficient. It's more clear cut when you can actually see the numbers. Okay, 
So that's kind of the idea. So I just want to give you a second just to kind of think through all that vocabulary that we just went through. So I've got three more of these here for you. You can pause the video and then hit play when you're ready to see the solutions. So here um, for C, so eight is the constant. There are no variables. There are no other coefficients. So we just have the number eight. So eight is kind of the lone term. And then the only factor here, I mean, I guess you could say it's eight, or if you said there were none, that, that's, that's fine too. So I'll just put an eight with a question mark. But the one thing we can say about this, this is one term and it's just the constant eight. Okay, so now let's pivot to X. So in this case, there are no constants. There's just the variable X. Now the coefficient here would be that invisible one. So once again, I'll put that in parentheses. This has just one term and you know you could say that there are factors or not. It kind of depends on how you want to interpret it. But this is what it looks like when there's one term and one variable and no clear coefficients, like no clearly stated ones. There's the invisible one. Okay, so now for the last one. So now we've got kind of everything. So the constant here would be seven. So this is two x squared minus four x plus seven. Now for variables, Personally, I would say that just the variable x, that's it. Um, some people might say like, oh, x squared is a variable. I, I don't really think think so, but if you wrote that, that's, that's fine. Um, and then for coefficients, so there are two really clear coefficients. There's two and there's negative four. Or you could just say four. So again, there's a little bit of an in, open to interpretation. Um, the terms though, You've got 2x squared, you've got negative 4x, and you've got 7. So you should definitely have seven, or you should have definitely have three terms. If you called this positive 4x, that's that's okay. Again, it's a little open to interpretation. And then the factors that we have, so we have the pair 2 and x squared, we have negative 4 and x, and then we'll just leave the 7 alone. So those are kind of our factors. So that's just some vocabulary just to kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're going through a math class. And so as far as algebraic expressions go, we actually kind of use them in our everyday life. We just don't even think about it. So here's, here's an example. So on Tuesdays, a movie theater has a deal where tickets are $8. Okay, so in this scenario, how much would a ticket cost for only you? Well, that, that's like pretty obvious, right? It's just $8. Like we just said that the tickets cost $8 each. Okay, so let me make this slightly harder. So how much is a ticket for you and two friends? So first, maybe just think about this. So you and two friends, so how much would that be? So it's gonna be 24, but why would it be 24? So what you're doing here is you're taking the three of you times the cost of a ticket, and that is $24. So I'm kind of building up to how this relates to an expression, so let's, let's try another one of these. Okay, so how much is a ticket for five, or a ticket for five people, tickets, I guess, we should maybe throw that out and how much are our tickets? My language is all off here. How much are tickets for five people and a $20 tub of popcorn? Okay, so think about what you're doing with this one. So you're taking the five people times the cost of the tickets, but then you're not done, right? You have to also add in that tub of popcorn. So here's everything. So this would be now 40 plus 20, so this is, 60 bucks right here. Okay, so now let me turn this into an algebra problem. How much is a ticket for Z people or how much are tickets for Z people? So thinking about the work that we did in the previous two steps, so basically what we're trying to do when we're creating an algebraic expression is we're just trying to write like where where is that place where you're kind of changing up the, the number each time? So it's always $8, right? It's always $8. The one thing that you do with that eight is you multiply it times the number of people. So if we wanna know how much does it cost for Z people, it would be eight times Z. Because that's exactly what we've been doing before, right? This was for three people, so three times eight. And for this one, it was for five people, so we did five times eight. And then we added on the, the tub of popcorn. So if you're just going for something more theoretical and you want to get an algebraic expression out of this, you would just put in 8z. So this is kind of what's, what the equation is in the back of your head that you're doing when you do this with real numbers. And so, you know, algebraic expressions, you can actually, you, you do kind of deal with them in everyday life in, in some ways, in some ways. Okay, 
So now what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit more about expressions and we're just going to go with straight algebra now. So we're going to just look at a couple of examples here where we just plug some numbers in. So these are the numbers we're going to plug in x equals negative 2, y equals 4, z equals 1 third. Okay, so all you have to do for this is where applicable you change the letter with the number. So where I have x, I'm now going to replace it with negative 2. Where I have y, I'm going to change it to a 4, and we're just going to calculate this by hand now. So this will be negative 6 minus 28, and so then that equals negative 34. Oh, well, maybe I'll get rid of the circle. So that's kind of the, the exercise here. So now let's do b. So once again, let's just replace everything. So this is going to be 6 times, so I'm going to replace the z with the 1 third. Um, then this x squared, I'm going to replace it with negative 2 squared, and then plus 2 times 4. Okay, so I want to actually point something out really important here now that, that was easy to miss in the first example, but in this one it's a little more pronounced. So when you make these substitutions, one thing that you always want to do, you always want to have these parentheses around that number. Because this is really going to come in th this really matters, I guess, when you have this exponent here. If you didn't have the parentheses here, that would actually change the value of your answer. And this exponent is intending for you to square the entirety of whatever that value is. And the idea of squaring the entirety of that value would be the idea of putting parentheses around it as shown. Okay, so now let, let's go through this. So 6 times 1 third. So if you remember your fractions, which I've gone through in, in great detail. So this is really like 6 over 1 times 1 over 3. So this is going to equal 6 over 3. We'll simplify that in a second. Then this is minus, so we're just continuing on with this sign here. So now I'm going to take negative 2, all of negative 2, and square it. So ignore this minus sign here. But just all of negative 2 squared, is this part here positive or negative? This part would be positive. So I'm going to put a set of parentheses around it, but now show what the evaluated answer is. And last but not least, 2 times 4 is 8, so there we go. So now we've just got to simplify this. Okay, so what is 6 divided by 3? That's 2. So this is 2 minus 4 plus 8, so that's negative 2 plus 8 and then this is going to equal 6. So that would be our final answer in this case. So it's a little bit of work. Okay, so now I have C here. So what I want you to do is I actually want you to pause the video here, give this one a go, and then hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to make some substitutions. So once again, I'm going to use my parentheses. So I've got x is going to be replaced with negative 2, z will be replaced with 1 third squared. Okay, so this comes out to negative 2 plus. So how do you square this? So to square this, actually, you just square the top and the bottom. 1 squared is just 1. 3 squared is 9. So there you go. OK, so now I need to combine these two things. So I've gone through this in great detail in um, just videos on, on fractions. So we have to turn negative 2 into a fraction over 1. And then the denominator that I want here, I want to have, I want this to ultimately have a denominator of 9 because that's the denominator here. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing times 9 over 9, and then all of this plus 1 ninth. So um, let's see, negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, so this becomes negative 18 over 9 plus 1 over 9. And so ultimately this will equal negative 17 over 9. So there you go. Okay, so that's kind of your intro to working with expressions, terminology, how to evaluate them, stuff like that. So that will do it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.